continuing with Friday the 13th, the Ultimate DVD Collection with Friday the 13th, Part 4, the final chapter. Unless you count the next six movies. And Freddy vs. Jason. And the remake. Anyway, this one doesn't really have any counselors either. Basically, it's a bunch of young people who move into a house in these woods. And as we know by now, Jason doesn't really like people to come into his woods, even though he apparently hasn't done anything to the people already living there, including the Jarvis family. Anyway, we start with yet another recap, but at least this time they re-edited it. It's actually a kind of best of, you know, greatest hits of Jason kind of thing. And then we start meeting our characters once he's killed the first couple of people. You know, the mandatory opening to such a film. The girls in this one, they're hot. I'll admit that. And most of them get naked, so th this actually has the most nudity of all of them, I'm told. Note that that's of both genders, though. The girls look so much alike, I couldn't tell them apart. We meet Tommy Jarvis, Corey Feldman, who I'm told is, you know, was a child star. I'm not sure I've seen him in much of anything else, and he sure didn't do much good here. I'm not entirely sure why he was even in the film, other than to say, hey, there's a kid in this one. He lives with his mother and sister, and they are supposed to be, like, annoyingly cute. And they definitely got the annoying part down. And I don't think it's really a spoiler to say there's also a guy named Rob who is hunting Jason. You can tell this from the moment you meet him, from the moment he starts talking about who he is, basically. So, yeah. I wish I could say they didn't completely and utterly waste the potential that this gives them, but I'd be lying. The acting is, again, pretty bad, and the dialogue is also bad, but not the worst yet. The one exception is Crispin Glover. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to tell him apart from the others, because this is the oldest film I've seen him appear in. I also didn't realize he he either was or just looked really frickin' young here. He's like 20 or something. I don't know, he just looked ancient just you know, 10, 15 years later in other movies, but anyway. He's hilarious in this. I hadn't expected him to be so much fun to watch. You can kind of sympathize with his character, and just the way he moves, his mannerisms, the things he says, just really funny. He also dances, and to some people, that alone will be worth the price of admission. The deaths... aren't all that creative, mostly. There are a few, but they really are very few. Mostly, it's just pretty plain, and it feels like it's just... You know, it's introducing characters just to kill them off, and it's killing them just so they could say, hey, look at how many people we killed in this movie. There's no real the terror of these kills. Most of the time there's no, not even any build-up to it. There's little to no atmosphere in this movie. There's some suspense near the end, but the ending is nowhere near as good a climax as that of the third movie. And again, this is about the only time we really see Jason's near the end, and 
it's just not quite as good as it was in the third one. I think it's a different actor. He does still do a pretty decent performance, but it's just not as effective at all. The effects are okay, but they really aren't that fantastic. There are a couple that stand out, but again, I'd say the third one did better. The movie is again short, and I don't know, it's it's not the slowest moving movie, it, it's got an okay pace for a slasher flick of the 80s, but it's just not all that good. Most of the characters you don't care about, most of them I couldn't even tell apart, again. And it just doesn't really... It doesn't really grab you, you know, because most of the time there's almost no suspense. You know, suddenly someone dies, and it lingers a little longer than it did in the first, and I think also the second maybe, but that's basically it. You know, we just see death, and then it goes to... One of the first cuts in this movie is extremely awkward, cutting from someone dying to a sunny day out in the woods, and it's just really really abrupt. I don't know if, you know, some footage got lost there, a, a good transition got lost there in the process of transferring this to DVD, but I don't think so. And that's basically what there is to say about the movie. All in all, you could skip it. I don't think it would really matter at all. You weren't missing anything other than you know, nudity and a few deaths that are pretty decent, but that's it. Anyway, that was my spoiler review of Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which it wasn't. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.